Well, good evening and uh, welcome along to our evening service uh, tonight. Uh, we're glad to uh, have you uh, tune in and uh, we trust that uh, this, this evening's message will be a blessing to you. Uh, I want to uh, preach it on a simple theme and that is uh, the title of the message is Three Burdens and Who is to Bear Them? Three Burdens and Who is to Bear Them? I want us to First of all, go to the book of uh, Galatians, uh, chapter 6, the book of Galatians, chapter 6, and we'll read uh, from verse, uh, uh, well, we'll read from the beginning of the chapter uh, down to verse uh, 6, uh, sorry, verse 5. Uh, it says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. And then if we turn over to uh, the book of Psalms, uh, to the Psalms there, in uh, Psalm 55 and verse 22, the Bible says, Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous uh, to be moved. So uh, there's uh, three different verses there. Verse 2, verse 6 of Galatians chapter 6, and then uh, Psalm 55 and verse 22, which speak about burdens. And it talks about uh, the different uh, ones who are to take on those uh, burdens. So <clears throat> let's go to the Lord in prayer as we consider this subject uh, tonight. Uh, three burdens and who is to bear them. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity now to open your word. And Father, to, uh, to do a, uh, a study, Lord, into your word, to uh, try to understand the balance of responsibilities and uh, the... Uh, what, uh, Lord, is your part? What is our part? What is someone else's part? We ask, Father, that uh, you'd help us uh, tonight to have understanding as we look at this subject, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, uh, in the verses we've just read, uh, we find a description of three burdens. And uh, in each case, a different person is to bear those different Burdens In Galatians chapter 6 and verse 2, uh, it tells us to bear one another's burdens. Uh, then in Galatians chapter 6 verse 5, it tells us that we must bear our own burdens. And then in Psalm 55 and verse 22, it tells us that we must let the Lord bear our burdens. Uh, so that may sound at first like a, a massive contradiction. Uh, but of course, this is not the case because, uh, and that's quite obvious from uh, Galatians chapter 6, the Apostle Paul is, is writing uh, this uh, chapter. He wouldn't have contradicted himself uh, within just a few verses. Uh, and sometimes uh, as we look into the scriptures, we might find verses which seem at first to be contradictory, but in fact, uh, it helps us to see a balance. Uh, a, a necessary balance in a particular truth. Uh, and so we are uh, told here three different uh, things, uh, different types of burdens uh, that are to be borne and, uh, of course, uh, the different uh, people who are to bear those burdens. So first of all, the context of Galatians chapter 6 and verse 2 is restoring uh, brothers and sisters that have stumbled in sin. And of course, uh, we see that there, let me just uh, quickly turn there, uh, in Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, uh, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. And so uh, we have that word restore, restore such a one in the spirit of of meekness. The word restore uh, has the idea of repairing or restoring to usefulness again. So when uh, a brother or sister in Christ has 
uh, been overtaken in a fault um, that is uh, the result of, of stepping aside uh, from the walk that they're meant to be uh, walking in the Christian life and they've perhaps stumbled or whatever in the Christian life, uh, we uh, see here that we are to seek to, for those the Bible says are spiritual, as to seek to restore such ones uh, in a spirit of meekness, considering themselves lest they also be tempted, uh, but to restore them again uh, to a place of usefulness in the Lord's work. Again, there are times when sin can get into a believer's life and hinder his, his or her usefulness for Christ, and uh, they become hindered by sin. Uh, there are also times when believers begin to get their eyes on the world rather than on uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, they need a mature brother or sister uh, to come alongside and to bear their burden, that is to encourage them, to help direct them, to encourage them to get back on the right track and uh, to be walking again with the Lord. So the word bear here has the idea of seeing a need and helping someone out, seeing a need and helping someone out. It says in 1 John chapter 3 and verse 16 and 17, Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? Uh, so in this case, uh, in Galatians, the need is not only a physical need, such as we see there in uh, 1 John uh, chapter 3, verse 16, 17, a need, uh, a physical need, uh, material need, as it were, and you've got the resources to be able to meet that need, and yet uh, you shut your bowels of compassion up, as it were, you cease to uh, really... Uh, be loving in a practical way towards that person. And as a result, the Bible says, how dwelleth the love of God uh, in him? Uh, and, uh, and so in the book of Galatians, it's not speaking of a material need as such, but speaking of a spiritual need where we need to, uh, if we have the resources, uh, and as a, a spiritual believer, a mature believer, uh, we ought to be able to have those resources available to us in the word of God uh, we ought to be able to help them out. An elderly person sometimes, for example, needs to uh, hold a younger person's arm in order to steady them that they might be enabled to go forward. Uh, there are times, uh, for example, when uh, my mother-in-law, uh, she might be sitting in the lounge room with us uh, and she's sitting in a uh, very comfortable chair, but she can't get up out of that chair by herself at times. And so uh, we have to have a couple of the children or myself uh, get up and uh, just help her to steady her on her feet before she can go about her business, whatever she is wanting to do. But she can't get out of the chair by herself. She needs someone to aid her, to uh, to restore her, as it were, to uh, getting back on a steady path. Uh, and so the idea is not for me to uh, to take um, her burden, as it were, and make it my burden, but just simply to come alongside as they stumble and to help them with that burden so that they can get back on, on the right track themselves, so that they themselves can be useful again. It may be going to a person and uh, someone who is struggling with temptation in their own life and maybe sharing some things uh, from the Word of God that have been a help to you as you have sought to uh, struggle with uh, temptation, something, some uh, steps or some uh, principles of, of getting the victory. Uh, for example, it may be, uh, you know, not making provision for the flesh, uh, for example. Um, I heard of a young man who uh, came to a pastor and he said, uh, Pastor, I'm, I'm just having a real uh, struggle with pornography and uh, and uh, just uh, I just uh, can't seem to help myself. And uh, anyway, the pastor came around a little bit later on to his house and up in his bedroom, he had all these posters of uh, semi-naked or naked uh, women uh, on the wall. He said, brother, he said, uh, you've got to uh, make sure that uh, you take these 
down and destroy them. Uh, this is just a provision for the flesh. No wonder he was having uh, struggles with that if he kept feasting on those things with his eyes. And of course, the Bible uh, tells us that the eyes are never satisfied. Uh, they're always wanting more and more and more and more. So uh, to be able to give some principles, to share some things with another uh, who is struggling uh, is, is the idea here. Uh, and of course, uh, it may be that a brother or sister is, gets themselves into a situation where uh, they uh, have got out of fellowship with someone because of something they've done where they've offended someone or they've hurt someone, they've done wrong to someone. And so to be able to come alongside and to share the steps uh, to being able to, to bring about reconciliation uh, with those people uh, is, is a good thing. And this is part of what it means to bear one another's burdens, to help to restore, to help to repair so that they might be useful yet again. Sometimes you see your brother or sister uh, beginning to uh, lose interest in the things of God, beginning to cool down in their walk with God and beginning to stray. And you recognize your responsibility to see them about that. And that, that in itself may be a very difficult thing to, to do, to have to approach them, to be able to try and uh, correct them in the path that they're going. But our attitude should be, uh, herein perceive we the love of God because he laid down he uh, because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Uh, so um, uh, we ought to be able to, we ought to re recognize that we need to deny self, uh, sacrifice self as it were, in order to be able to meet uh, someone else's need, to be able to help them and uh, do, to try and correct them, get them back on the right path. However, to bear one another's burdens does not mean that we take on their responsibility before the Lord. Again, in the book of Galatians, chapter 6 and verse 5, it says, For every man shall bear his own burden. Every man shall bear his own burden. Uh, that is, we are to, uh, this is the burden of responsibility. The burden of responsibility. Uh, we're not to assume other people's responsibilities. I remember one time uh, when I was uh, working up in Mildura uh, and I was, uh, uh, I took the role of a carer for some people with various different disabilities. And uh, I remember uh, we, we went out with a particular young man. And uh, when we came back to uh, the place where we were working with them, uh, the, um, the, the respite place, um, I picked up the, uh, the groceries and was going to take them into the house. And uh, the person who was basically showing me the ropes said, no, don't do that. You don't, don't take their responsibility. You let them take those uh, groceries in. They need to learn to be responsible with things like that. And so that was a lesson uh, for me at that time. And of course, if you come along and say, well, I'm going to take up the, uh, this person's burden, that is a responsibility, uh, you may actually be saying, well, I'm not going to allow the Lord to put that burden on that person. And yet it may be the Lord's intention for that person to bear that responsibility. Uh, and therefore, if you take away their responsibility, you take away that burden, uh, then they're going to be crippled as it were, and not be strengthened as a result of uh, uh, working through that burden that the Lord has allowed uh, in their lives. I remember one time uh, I was uh, preparing uh, for a marriage. Uh, I was going to be the, uh, I was going to, uh, was going to uh, be the celebrant at a marriage. And uh, I remember going around and visiting the mother of the bride uh, who is going to soon be married and uh, anyway as we were talking uh, she happened to mention that she'd never taught her daughter to do any washing up or to make the beds or to cook or anything like that and she said I hope she'll be okay when she gets married I hope her husband uh, knows how to do those things and uh, I was concerned because I thought well you've in a sense crippled that young girl uh, as far as preparing for marriage because 
she doesn't know how to look after herself. She's she's basically having to go into a marriage where someone will have to look after her because she hasn't learned any independent skills. Uh, and I uh, felt very uh, concerned uh, about that. And it didn't surprise me that uh, the marriage didn't actually last very long. I think they were a couple that uh, were both looking to the other person to look after them and uh, assume their responsibilities. And yet the Bible doesn't tell us that we should, we should do that. So God places certain burdens uh, into our lives. Uh, and in those cases, my responsibility is, is not to bear or take upon myself your burden. Uh, my responsibility is to help you bear, bear your burden. So say, for example, you have a credit card and uh, you run up a ridiculous amount of uh, uh, debt on your credit card. Uh, would I really be helping you if I was to come alongside and say, look, I'll bear your burden by paying off your debt? Uh, well, that might be helpful uh, as far as a first time around uh, to be able to do that sort of thing. Um, but um, unless I've given you instruction to change your financial habits, then you're going to uh, take that same credit card and you're going to build up another ridiculous debt uh, because you haven't learned financial management. And I've not really helped you at all. I've just got you out of, I've got, got you out of the immediate problem, the immediate uh, trouble that you're facing uh, as far as your accountability to the, to the uh, credit organization. Uh, but uh, I've not really helped you to overcome the financial worries because I haven't given you strategies to help you to be responsible uh, in your finances. Uh, all I've done is tell you there's someone uh, who is there to help you get out of your problem the next time. And uh, uh, that's not to be the case. That adds uh, too much responsibility upon yourself uh, as far as uh, uh, the wise use of your own finances. So God allows uh, financial reproofs for wrong living or unwise stewardship. And uh, there's many different applications that we could make. For example, uh, things like overdue bills is an indication that there might be, uh, God might be allowing a financial reproof on your life. God's chastening. It says in the book of Proverbs chapter 3, verse 28, say not unto thy neighbor, go and come again, and tomorrow I will give when thou hast it by thee. Uh, sometimes people uh, allow the bills to come in and they have the money to be able to pay the bill, but they choose instead to spend it on something else. And as a result, the bill does not get paid. And the, the Bible uh, tells us that that's not a wise thing to, to do. So this may be uh, the pressure of all those bills coming in. Maybe actually God trying to get your attention. Uh, another uh, evidence of uh, financial reproof is uh, when someone is borrowing all the time, uh, they're spending more than uh, what is coming in. And so as a result, they're always uh, getting a little extra and, and borrowing money. The Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 6, For the Lord thy God blesseth thee as he promised thee, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, but thou shalt not borrow, and thou shalt reign over many nations, but that they shall not reign over thee. Now, there are times when it is legitimate to borrow money. There are times in Scripture uh, when God's uh, people were told to go out and to borrow uh, certain things. And uh, God was able to make provision even through their borrowing. But uh, generally speaking, there's, uh, there's a caution that goes with borrowing. And God said to his people Israel that uh, they were not to go and uh, borrow from the other nations. Because in a sense, that was uh, uh, telling, that was giving the message to other nations that God was not sufficient to meet their needs. So they had to, uh, they were seeking to borrow money uh, elsewhere. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, not a good uh, message to be conveying to a lost world that's looking for a God who is sufficient to meet our needs. Uh, another financial reproof uh, is when the uh, we just can't seem to, uh, you know. Uh, allow we can't see the ends uh, meeting as it were. Uh, we find that uh, you know we uh, we're trying to get money and we maybe 
doing different things to try and get extra money, and yet uh, we're just, it's just the ends are not meeting as it were. Uh, and uh, it says in the book of Haggai, chapter 1, verse 9, you looked for much, and lo, it came to little. And when you brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why, saith the Lord of hosts, because of mine house that is waste, and you run every man unto his own house. That's when we have uh, wrong priorities as far as our financial uh, management is concerned. You know, God uh, says a lot about money in the word of God. There is a great deal uh, of teaching about finances in the scripture. Uh, and when we have the wrong priorities uh, and we put uh, things first that ought not to be put first, uh, and we neglect those things that we ought to be putting first, uh, then we can expect financial reproof. Uh, and then uh, another uh, evidence of financial reproof is family pressures. In Proverbs chapter 15, verse 27, it says, He that is greedy of gain troubleth his own house, uh, but he that hateth gifts or bribes uh, shall live. And so the first part of that verse, he that is greedy of gain troubleth his own house. House. That's speaking about family pressures. When we're not using our money correctly, God allows the pressure uh, to build up within our homes as a means of get, trying to get our attention, uh, as a means of chastening us so that we'll rethink our strategy of how we are using this resource that God has allowed us uh, to be able to use. He's trusting us as stewards to be able to use these resources. Now, the problem is not solved by just giving money to people like this. It's like when people uh, come to the church every now and again, someone will say, oh, look, you know, uh, I've uh, run out of money and uh, I, I'm just coming to the church to see if you can give me some money to help me out and that sort of thing. Uh, quite often, uh, it's not wise to just give them a handout of money. Uh, it's much better to go and buy them a some groceries or something practical, because if you just give them money, they may go out and buy alcohol or buy drugs or, or something like that. Uh, and so the problem's not solved by just giving money to people like that. Um, their way of life needs to be examined. Another example of this is in the area of child training. The responsibility for child training is primarily that of the father and the mother. A lot of people think that uh, if, if I want my uh, children to grow up to love the Lord and to be spiritual, then uh, we need to put them into a youth ministry and into a Sunday school. Uh, and then they it's as if they give over their uh, responsibility for training their, their children to the Sunday school teacher or to the youth group leader or uh, whoever. And yet uh, they're not the primary ones that God holds accountable uh, to train up your child in the way they should go. God's word uh, tells us primarily that of the father or mother uh, or the grandparents uh, in some cases. And, uh, and so uh, we have that responsibility. We're not to uh, come in and try and take over that responsibility uh, for someone who uh, is a Christian and who has the word of God uh, to help them uh, to be able to train up their children the way they should go. Uh, we can come alongside and encourage them, as in the first case of the, the burden there, to help them to, uh, to help them along, to give them some strategies. But we cannot take that burden, that responsibility ourselves away from the ones that God has primarily entrusted that responsibility, that burden to. Uh, so we're not to shoulder other people's responsibilities. We are to help people shoulder their own responsibilities. If you're always rushing into the rescue when your kids get into trouble, uh, that's not the most loving thing to do. Some parents will, will do that. What you need to do is help them to handle their problems, help them to own up to uh, their own irresponsibility, uh, to confess when they've done wrong, uh, to make it right when they've done the wrong thing, rather than uh, coming in and making excuses for them and uh, that sort of thing, uh, that is not going to help them. If the child has the burden of homework, for example, uh, from school, what does he learn if a parent does the homework for him or her? 
uh, really they don't learn anything. Uh, they're just this, the parent comes in trying to help their child and they end up doing the homework themselves. Uh, that's not going to help the child learn anything. Uh, they're just taking on extra, extra burdens that uh, really God has not uh, said that he will help them, uh, equip them with, and then that brings extra pressure on the family. Rather, what we should do, sit down with our children, and uh, if they're going to take on some homework, you need to perhaps uh, look at that and explain the uh, the uh, the basics or the, the principle behind what has to be worked out, and then let the child work through it. Even if they get it all wrong, it's better for them to make some mistakes uh, and then have the teacher at school uh, show them where they where they went wrong rather than for uh, the parent to take on the responsibility of doing the homework to try and help the child in that way. It's not true help. It's not a legitimate way of helping the child. Uh, the third type of burden that we read about in the Word of God is the one uh, that we find there in, uh, the, in Psalm 55. And uh, this is the burden... Uh, of worries and concerns. In other words, things that make us restless, things that make us restless. Uh, sometimes that will be certain certain reservations that we might have about certain things, certain regrets from things that we've done in the past, certain resentment towards other people who maybe have hurt us or have done us wrong in some way. But these things cause us restlessness, uh, their worries and different uh, concerns. Let me uh, read uh, from what the Lord Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, uh, down to verse 34, where he says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment or clothing? Uh, behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, Neither do they reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these." Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Uh, so uh, worries about the future, worries about health, worries about uncertain things. Uh, you know, these are things uh, that uh, we need to uh, uh, allow the Lord uh, to take for us. Rather than be burdened down with those cares, we need to give that burden to the Lord. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, be careful or be anxious for nothing, uh, but in everything uh, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep or guard your heart, uh, hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. What a wonderful promise that is. There's nothing that comes into our life that we need to be anxious and, and uh, full of care about. Uh, we ought not to have things that uh, would make us restless, uh, that we'd hold on to those things and, and just uh, go through uh, the night, you know, uh, anxious and concerned about those things. In, in, in the case of uh, things which come into our lives, uh, cares and worries, uh, things that make us restless, uh, we ought to roll our burden upon the Lord and let him take care of those things. Uh, when some concern 
uh, comes into our life, pray about it. Pray about it. Give it to God. Again, in the case of finances, when we can do no more ourselves, uh, when we have a shortfall, then we're to commit that to the Lord. And if it's a need, then he will provide. Uh, so uh, God will provide for our needs. And uh, I would be surprised how often uh, we, uh, uh, <clears throat> we think that uh, we, we, we worry and we stress and we fret over a certain thing. Uh, and then all of a sudden God uh, provides uh, for whatever that uh, particular need was. So we're not to go looking for someone uh, when we get into financial strife who is going to bear our burden for us and get us out of financial hot water. Uh, in a sense, we're robbing ourselves of the blessing when we do that. In Psalm 37, verse 25, uh, David said, I have been young and now am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. In other words, God uh, has always been faithful to be a provider, not only for David, but he said, you know, I've been a young man and I've observed how uh, God has always provided uh, for God's people. Uh, and now I'm old, he says, as he writes uh, in Psalm 37, and he says, I've, I've not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Now, today we might say, well, David never saw uh, some, uh, he, he never saw the righteous begging bread, but obviously he didn't know some Christians that we might know. Uh, of course, so uh, what do you think the world thinks uh, when, uh, for example, uh, a church puts on a fate and uh, sells things in order to raise money? Uh, isn't it saying to the world, give us a hand? Our God can't really look after us. Uh, so we're looking to the world to help provide uh, for our needs. That's not a very uh, good lesson to, to give to, uh, to the world. Uh, God uh, always provides for our need. And uh, as far as the finances of the church are concerned, uh, we, have a, we live by a principle that uh, the way that we raise money for uh, godly things like missions and uh, the, the uh, things that a church would spend uh, money on uh, is we do that by the free will offerings of God's people. Uh, that's what we do. We don't go to the world uh, and seek help from the world in that sense. And that's a good principle uh, to, uh, uh, to go by. Um, we learn from these three burdens that we've looked at tonight that the Lord would have us ask whenever a question or a burden arises, who is responsible to bear this burden? I, am I responsible to bear this burden? Is my brother responsible or my sister responsible to bear this burden? Uh, or is God responsible to bear this burden? Take the problem of eternal life. Who is responsible to purchase eternal life? Who is responsible to pay for eternal life? Well, the Bible says this is the Lord Jesus Christ's responsibility. It says in 1 Peter chapter 1, uh, verse 18 and 19, For as much as you know that you are not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. And so we see there that it's it's the precious blood, which was the payment of sin. That was the, that was, uh, the price to redeem us, to set us free uh, from the, the bondage of sin. It's not what we do, it's what he has done. That's his burden, as it were, uh, which he has fulfilled 2,000 years ago. Who is responsible then to make the gift of God mine. Well, it says there in Revelation chapter 22 in verse 17, and the spirit and the bride say, come and let him that heareth say, come and let him that is a first come and whosoever will let him take the water of life freely. And so uh, in that verse, particularly the last part of the verse, we see that uh, once we hear the message of the gospel, about the water of life, about eternal life, uh, whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. How do we do that? When we put our trust and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and his finished work on Calvary, 
the fact that he's risen from the dead according to the scriptures, according to the prophecies of scripture. And then who is responsible to let people know about that wonderful message of the gospel? Well, the Bible says, and the spirit and the bride say, come and let him that heareth say, come. Have you heard the gospel? Have you tasted? Taste and see that the Lord is good. The Bible says, uh, if you've tasted the good word of God, if you've uh, have, if you've tasted of eternal life, that is, you've partaken of eternal life, then the Bible says, let him that heareth say, come. In other words, invite people to come and partake themselves. So we are responsible. The Christians uh, who have received God's gift of eternal life are then responsible to let others know about this and invite them to come. They don't have to force them, but they do need to invite them to come. And of course, you can do that in various different ways. So that's salvation. What about uh, uh, other areas such as health? Uh, well, I'm responsible. If I'm going to be healthy, there's certain things that I need to, to try to do to uh, encourage my healthiness. For example, I need to watch what I eat, uh, make sure that I'm not just eating junk all the time, uh, but that I need to eat some healthy foods as well. I need to perhaps do some exercise and get that exercise in. That's my responsibility as far as health is concerned. Uh, but then there is uh, my responsibility to my brethren is that uh, we uh, need to care for our brethren who are sick. How can we do that? Well, one way we can do, it, do that is to pray for our brethren. And of course, uh, oftentimes uh, when we have our prayer and Bible study in the midweek uh, meeting, uh, we're often uh, receiving requests from the brethren. Uh, and oftentimes a lot of those requests are, please pray for so-and-so, they're sick, they're not well, they're in hospital, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, that's our opportunity then to, uh, to exercise that responsibility of praying for our brothers and sisters in Christ. And, uh, you know, over the years, I have seen many, many, many uh, prayers answered in relation to people who have been sick and ill. Uh, has everyone been healed? No, not everyone. Sometimes uh, some people have died. But I, I have to say that in the majority of cases, as we have prayed for people, uh, most people have been healed and have, have got uh, uh, well again. And, uh, and so uh, that's part of our responsibility to pray for others, to care for others as far as their health is concerned. And of course, uh, there may be times when we can do other things for the, hair, for the care of, of our brethren uh, that uh, you know, are practical things, maybe taking a meal around to someone's house who has not been able to go out and do shopping because they've been ill uh, or different things uh, like that. And then uh, what is God's responsibility? Well, God ultimately is responsible uh, to heal uh, those uh, people, to, uh, to work in their life, to, uh, uh, to, to raise them up from their sickbed, or else if it's his will to take them home uh, to be with himself, if it's uh, that time. Uh, everyone has an appointment time uh, with death. Everyone has an appointment with God. Uh, that day, we don't know what day that will be, but uh, that's God's responsibility. I'm not to make that uh, or try and uh, uh, set a date as to when that's going to take place. Um, what about uh, our appearance? You know, what's my responsibility? What's my responsibility to others? What's God's responsibility? Well, um, you know, uh, as far as God's responsibility is concerned, he... Uh, really dictates uh, it, as we're born there's certain traits that are genetic that come through and there as you look in the mirror, mirror you may not be pleased with certain things that you see uh, in the mirror but uh, you know God may have a purpose uh, for some of those things uh, if you have a long nose he may have a purpose for that you say well, what possible purpose could God have for a long nose I don't know but God knows and uh, and so he may have purposes for the things that we find that are, are not attractive. Uh, and uh, who knows, he may be protecting you uh, from temptation. I don't know. Um, but in any case, um, uh, that's God's responsibility. Um, uh, he can give, um, uh, uh, it might be my, it might be my responsibility as I, 
uh, as I see need in someone else's life, uh, God may lay on my heart to uh, to be able to provide for someone's need. I remember uh, one time uh, I was uh, pastoring a church and I was starting to get some holes in my shoes. Uh, and uh, we had an evangelist come uh, at that particular time and he happened to notice that uh, the end part of my shoe was starting to come apart. He said, brother, let's go uh, to the shop. So I went to the shops thinking he wanted to buy something for himself. And uh, he ended up buying me a pair of shoes. I didn't ask him to do that. I didn't hint uh, that uh, he'd do that, but he saw that need. And, and so he wanted to be a blessing to me to help me to be useful in the work of the Lord, uh, just with as far as, far as having uh, shoes. Um, but then again, my responsibility as far as uh, my shoes was concerned is that I'm responsible for cleaning my shoes. Uh, and so uh, that's my burden that I have to, to bear. Uh, and so, uh, you know, that might be that. Uh, it's my responsibility to make sure that, uh, you know, I'm dressed in a way which uh, I have an uh, iron shirt, I have uh, clean clothes, uh, and that sort of thing. Uh, what about missions? Uh, when it comes to missions, God provides the power as far as the spiritual power for those missionaries as they preach the gospel and as they ministered to the saved. Uh, we provide the prayer uh, as we seek to bear the burden for one another. Uh, we provide the prayer. We provide uh, money uh, to help them to stay in the field where they are. Quite often, they don't. Uh, missionaries don't have the ability or uh, the freedom to be able to get work uh, in some of the fields that they go to. So we need to provide support for them so they'd be able to continue to do that work of gospel ministry on the field. Uh, and the missionary uh, then bears his burden or her burden by providing the work on the field. We can't do that uh, for them. We can't uh, go and preach to those people for them. They might have, we might have opportunities where we can go visit them and maybe do some preaching uh, or sharing the gospel or giving out tracts, uh, that sort of thing. But uh, generally speaking, the missionary... Uh, bears his own burden uh, of uh, the work of the ministry in that place. And then as far as the church is concerned, my responsibility as a pastor is to study and pray and uh, visit and uh, to do those various different things. But uh, when it comes to a sermon like this, my responsibility is to study the word of God, to put together the, the uh, uh, sermon as God lays on my heart, the message which is to be preached, to pray that God would bless that that message, uh, it's God's responsibility then to uh, to take that message and to uh, to lead the pastor as far as what he's going to preach on that particular occasion, and then to as the message goes forth to convict the hearts of God's people or to comfort the people uh, to work in their hearts, as it were. And then it's your responsibility uh, to uh, be attentive to the preaching of God's word, not to you know, click on the sermon and uh, see what you think after a few minutes and then click it off if you don't think you like where the sermon's going, uh, but rather to be attentive and to realize this is for what God has for you uh, in the local church and uh, uh, then to respond as the Spirit of God leads. Uh, and so we see these three responsibilities, these, these three uh, types of burdens and who is to bear them. Uh, today we see first of all that we are to bear one another's burdens. How can I help to restore or to repair another's usefulness? How can I p help to pick someone up so that they can uh, go on in their Christian life? How can I restore? Bear your own burden is the second one. Uh, I must assume my own responsibilities. There are certain responsibilities God has given to each of us. And uh, those are things that we're not to give to someone else. Uh, they're things that we bear ourselves. Uh, for example, the Bible tells us we're to have our own quiet time, where our, our own time alone with the Lord. Uh, don't leave that to the pastor to, to just preach and live on the preaching of others. Have your own personal, intimate walk with God. That's part of your burden and responsibility. And then there is um, our our. Uh, uh, the third point is cast your burden upon the Lord. Uh, and in that case, uh, I need to 
uh, as those things which would cause me to be restless uh, in life come into my life and come into my heart, then I need to take those things. I need to roll them upon the Lord, roll them onto the Lord, as it were, uh, so that he might bear those things and so that he can uh, put in my heart his peace uh, instead of that restlessness that we would struggle with. He doesn't want us to be an anxious people. Uh, he wants us to be a trusting, dependent people who are relying upon him. And so we need to rely upon him by rolling our restlessness upon him. So I trust this has been a blessing to you and uh, ask that, uh, uh, that uh, you meditate upon those things as uh, we apply them to each area of our life. Let's uh, close in a word of prayer, shall we? Father, uh, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for this uh, time that we can spend looking into your word and studying uh, these different aspects of the burdens, Lord, that can come into our lives. And uh, Lord, help us to understand the difference between bearing one another's burdens, bearing our own burden, and then casting our burden upon the Lord. These are different burdens, Lord, that uh, we are to bear ourselves or bear for one another or to have the Lord bear for us. And we ask, Lord, uh, give us a discernment uh, and understanding, wisdom, uh, Lord, to understand uh, these different aspects and to rightly take upon ourselves uh, our own responsibilities, uh, help us to bear those responsibilities. And then, Lord, as we see opportunity to uh, help others, to restore others, to repair others to a place of usefulness, help us to uh, to get alongside others and to be a blessing uh, to them, to help them, Lord, to be able to bear their own burdens. And then, uh, Lord, we pray as, uh, Lord, those things come into our heart that causes concern, worry and anxiety, help us, Lord, to just cast our burden upon the Lord and to see the peace of God, which passeth all understanding. Even, uh, Lord, uh, where the world looks on and said, I just can't understand uh, why they're so calm when they're, going through such a terrible trial. Uh, Lord, uh, we understand that this is a supernatural peace that you give and help us, Lord, when cares come into our life to, uh, to uh, pray, uh, to, uh, to make supplication and to be thankful as well. And your promise is that you will give us a peace which passes understanding. Help us to, uh, to do these things, Lord, and we'll give you the praise and glory as we see you working uh, in our lives, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.